That was no good, we gotta do it again. <laughs> oh fuck, I gotta cry, that was sick, man, shit. Holy fuck, you know? That was more than I was expecting. Thank you, Toronto, let me hear you. Yeah. Fuck, I actually feel like I'm gonna cry. I can remember, you know, I started in this comedy club, you fucks. I was 18. I started coming here when I was 15. I, tried, I was barely old enough to come in and shit. And we snuck in and we came in for a friend's birthday party. And I remember watching and being like, man, I'm gonna fucking do this. And when I started, I was 18 as an amateur. Yuck Yuck signed me when I was 20 years old. And look at this now, I'm here headlining in my hometown, sold out. Fuck! <laughs> Mark, Bre Mark Breslin, the owner, is here. Mark, I want to raise, bro. Fuck, I want to. <laughs> I'm making up, fuck, man. You know, we were supposed to do this years ago, and then fucking COVID happened, and we never got to do it. And then it gave me lots of time to just get angry and write jokes. And shit. <laughs> bro, sit the fuck down, bro. <laughs> you just missed the intro of my life, you fuck. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, this guy missed it. We got... Yeah, we were supposed to do it, and then COVID fucking happened, and we never got to do it, and then, like, uh, and then it just got me thinking. Like, even tonight, some of the comedians were talking about COVID. You got my trips on my brain. Trips on my brain that we're going to be COVID. We're going to be the COVID generation forever. Like, it doesn't even matter how long you're alive. You ever meet someone who was alive during World War II? That's who they were for the rest of their fucking lives. <laughs> even if they were 10 when it happened, you know? I had to hide under a table. You're like, all right, bro. Well, well. Hey, you know? That's gonna be us with COVID. Like, it doesn't seem cool now, but one day we're gonna be like 90. And we're not gonna be 90 like our grandparents 90, you know? We're gonna be like us 90, <laughs> covered in tattoos, hitting a vape pen and shit like that, you know? <laughs> this fucking raspberry hits like a motherfucker. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Saying old people shit. Grandpa, you hitting the vape? Yeah, I'm hitting the vape. And if you don't shut up, I'm gonna start hitting you. <laughs> you know, like, oh man, I can't wait because our grandkids are gonna trip. Our kids aren't gonna give a fuck. Our kids are gonna be like, oh, okay, Dad, you were alive during the great pandemic. Okay. All right, oh, you had to wear a mask. All right. But our grandkids are gonna trip. Because our grandkids are going to be, you know, we're going to be like 90, and one day they're going to be in high school and be like, turn to page 70, we're going to learn about the great pandemic. In the year 90, 2020, was... holy fuck, grandpa was alive for this shit, man. <laughs> no, he was alive, bro. I've seen his Facebook. He was alive in 2020. <laughs> I mean, and they're going to come home, and you know, they're going to ask them, mom, dad, can I talk to grandpa about the great pandemic? And the whole family's going to be, shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> Don't bring that shit up. Are you insane? Don't bring it up, he's gonna go nuts. Why, I just wanna ask him about masks. Masks! Like, <laughs> Let the boy speak. <laughs> and they're gonna trip. They're gonna trip because we gotta tell them about the Canadian pandemic. You understand our pandemic wasn't the same as the world pandemic. Because <laughs> they're gonna come home and they're gonna have questions and we're gonna have to tell them the truth. Because they're gonna come home and be like, Grandpa, Grandpa, I read in my history book that you were alive during the great pandemic. Is that true? And we're going to be like, yeah, damn right I was. I'm a survivor. <laughs> oh, my God, Grandpa. 
You survived the great pandemic? How? Look, I read in my history book right now. Look, during the great pandemic, millions of people died around the world. Millions of people died. That must have been awful, Grandpa. Did you lose a lot of friends? Oh! Oh! Not even one. No, not even one. <laughs> you see, Grandpa was under the age of 65 and in good health. <laughs> Did you catch it, Grandpa? Oh, like two or three times. <laughs> Did you isolate the first two times? <laughs> and then that fucking Trudeau stopped paying the bill. And we're going to be old and angry and we're not going to remember. And they're going to be like, who's Trudeau, Grandpa? We're going to be like, ah, I think he was the first black prime minister. I don't <laughs> I think he had a turban. I don't know. You know? <laughs> they're going to have questions and we're not going to have answers, man. They're gonna be like, but Grandpa, in my history book, look, it says right here, during the great pandemic, millions of people starved, Grandpa, around the world. Uh, millions of people, yeah, did you starve? Oh, oh, oh no, I got fatter somehow. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the fuck happened. They teach you about Uber Eats in that fucking book? Oh. Oh, oh, during the great pandemic, they'd leave the burger right at the door. <laughs> you didn't even have to talk to the fucking guy. That's crazy, Grandpa. How did you know he was there? Oh, you'd follow his little car on your phone. And you'd go, why the fuck's he been on Bluer for 10 minutes? You ever let the Uber Eats guy get far away from your door so that you don't have to like have, you just see them walking away, you're like, nah, yeah, now. <laughs> Why is there this shame? Don't look at me, I'm fuck, it's McDonald's. <laughs> right? If it was something healthy, you wouldn't give a fuck. You're like, oh, what is this? Fresh eat, mm, burritos, all right. Three in the morning, McDonald's. <laughs> My pressure. It says in my history book, a vaccine was created by doctors working around the world. Is that true? We're gonna be old and angry and be like, vaccine? What are you stupid? No! He was these truckers from Alberta. <laughs> They drove across the country bringing freedom and the highest gas prices we ever saw. <laughs> uh, how did they get rid of COVID? Oh, they fucking honked and they honked until Trudeau said, let my people go. Uh, uh. They they're gonna wanna know how it came to an end and we're not gonna remember. How did it come to an end? You know, just for two years, Doug Ford was like, two more weeks, two more weeks. And then remember one day on a Monday, he was like, hey, Saturday, let's go! Oh, man. You just got to work, they're like, hey, Doug Ford says Saturday, it's over. You're like, what about Friday at 11? Don't even fucking think about Friday at 11. COVID's still around. <laughs> but midnight, out of here. <laughs> COVID has a curfew this Saturday, again. Nobody gave a shit in that last week. Remember once he made the announcement that Saturday it was open, you stopped wearing your mask, you're just fucking faking it, put your hand like that, yeah, all right. The whole, hold a $5 bill, the bill's five, fucking blue, the mask is blue, let's go. Boom. Nobody gave a shit those last couple weeks, man. And straight the fuck up, you didn't lose a friend to COVID, you lost them to conspiracies. Oh. 
Oh, yeah. Some people just went fucking nuts. Week one, fucking April 2020. Bill Gates wants to fuck me. No, he doesn't. <laughs> Bring it back. Back down to earth, bro. Back down to earth. Oh, Wayfair is selling kids. No, they're not. No, they're not. I bought a bed from there, no kid. Okay, just fucking wood. The birds are real. Yeah, they are. The birds are real, bro. Get the fuck out of your mother's basement. The birds are real. You don't believe birds are real? Go to McDonald's, two in the morning. Throw fries in the air. You have to fight for your life against these fucking robot birds. <laughs> Nothing better than watching your own little National Geographic when you're high in a parking lot. You just throw fries and you watch all the birds like fight for fries. You ever see the big bird get the f too many fries? You're like, hey, get the fuck out of here. You ever stand up for the little birds? Hey, hey, hey. The French fries are for everybody. You know the seagull I'm talking about. You hear him from a mile away, and the second the fries come out, <laughs> all the other seagulls are like, fucking Bill, fucking Bill, you're yelling already. <laughs> always, always a couple of pigeons just show up late. What's going on, fries? <laughs> Straight the fuck up. You didn't lose your friends to COVID, you lost in the conspiracies, man. People went fucking crazy. One of my favorite conspiracies was the lizard people conspiracy. If you don't know about the lizard people conspiracy, it's because you're a good person. It means you don't stay up late at night high and drunk scrolling through the dark web. Justin Bieber is a lizard. Watch my proof. You're like, this is shit. <laughs> but I love it. It's my favorite conspiracy because what if it was true? Wouldn't it be great that all of our politicians are fucking lizards? That'd be awesome. Tomorrow you just show to work and your boss is Look at the TV! Justin Trudeau just ripped off his face and it's Trudeau like, we're finally gonna get water to the... No, we're not. <laughs> but that means every politician is a lizard. That means Doug Ford is a fucking lizard. <laughs> Imagine Doug Ford goes to rip off his face. <laughs> it's just Rob Ford. <laughs> Man, I lived in Toronto when that guy was the mayor. That was the best two fucking months. Remember when he was smoking crack and shit? Ugh. Man, those two months were crazy. They were following him. Remember they caught him speaking Jamaican in that state queen? Yo, Bambaras, give me a sirloin, 10 ounce. Buck up, buck up. <laughs> Remember they said he was cheating? He was just showed up like half drunk to work. Cheat? I don't need a cheat. I got enough pussy at home. Buck, 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 buck. Like, it was insane insane everybody in toronto was like yo that guy gotta be that mayor for that rest of that one buck up buck up oh <laughs> we found out rob ford was smoking crack he should have been the mayor forever who the fuck knows the city better than a crackhead nobody okay nobody ask a crackhead but how do i get downtown hey you run down blur you take bathers and you're there how do i get there faster fucking run okay <laughs> Oh, yeah. Living in Toronto is a fucking funny thing. I, I grew up in Toronto my whole life. I grew up my whole life, man. Toronto changes after, like, the, the, after it gets dark. Their day is very businessy and like, eh, but Toronto. And at nighttime, it's fucking Queen and Spadina McDonald's. And, yeah, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> you ever all fucked up just walking down the street with some crackheads? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah! And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah! You gotta fit in, you gotta blend in. Oh, yeah. Toronto's a funny city, you know? Because it's like one of the last years I lived here was when the Toronto Raptors won the championship. It'll clap if you lived in the city when that happened. Oh. 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 Man. <laughs> that was my going away present, you know, because I live outside of the city. That's one of the cool things about living in the city. You get to, you get to experience things together. Like when, when Toronto won that year, I got to experience it with my family, everybody, my little girl, it was great. And even my parents, I got Portuguese parents. I had to, <laughs> my father near the end of the season was like, hey, the guy on the radio say Raptors are gonna win. You think so? <laughs> I'm like, you don't even like basketball. He's like, if they're gonna win, I fucking like basketball. <laughs> so he watches basketball, he gets into it. It's one of my favorite stories. Because at first he doesn't really get it, he's watching, we beat Orlando, he's like, hey, we beat Orlando. I'm like, yeah, he's like, ah, fuck you, Orlando, fuck you, you know? <laughs> but then, 
In that second round, if you guys know what I'm talking about, it's that really famous shot that Kawhi Leonard hits where it bounces around and goes in. Guys, I'm downtown. I forget, we're at a real sports bar. When that game is going on, the shot is bouncing around. You ever been somewhere where someone's like, time stood still? That was for real. There was 500 people in that fucking bar, and the second the ball was bounced into the court, nobody said shit. It was silent. I'll never forget, the ball gets bounced in. Run, the guy runs it to the side. Kawhi gets it, man. Fucking, dude, he takes this shot. Everyone is real sports bar. just so fucking quiet. Everyone's holding each other like this. <laughs> like, you've never even met the guy, but you're like, I love you, bro. Let's go. <laughs> no, no, if he makes it, we go down together, bro. I don't give a shit. What's your name? Ricardo on Mike. Pleasure, bro. <laughs> I'll never forget, y'all. I'll never fucking forget. As the shot, okay, the shot bounces. It's cha, cha, cha. Everyone's going fucking nuts. The ball goes in. Game seven, Raptors win. Boom, we're going into fucking, okay? As this is all happening, everyone's yelling, you know, I can hear some guy jingling from behind me. Some guy's coming out the washroom with his pants down going, we won, we won. Dude. I, just the idea of him shitting and just hearing, God, I'll wipe tomorrow. Like, you know. <laughs> Dude, so all this is happening. I remember I can hear it on my phone. Just, <laughs> I look, it's my dad. I go, no way. I go, daddy. He goes, holy shit. I go, yeah, crazy, yeah. He goes, I never see basketball like this. Basketball, the fucking rest, man. This is crazy. <laughs> I go, yeah, you like it? He goes, oh my God, the best. We win everything. I go, no, this is only the second round. He goes, everybody go crazy. Why? I go, because we don't win shit. This is amazing. This is, this is it. We might never win anything again. A, a second round, Jesus Christ. <laughs> My dad's laughing on the phone. He goes, okay, you having fun? Enjoy yourself. I love you. I go, go, go. And as I'm about to hang up, I hear, hey, hey, hey. I go, yeah. He goes, hey, tell me something. Why sometimes it's three points and sometimes it's two? <laughs> <laughs> and I was so drunk. I went, if it's the white guy, it's two. If it's the black guy, it's three. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. He believed it, because he was like, oh, Toronto got a lot of black guys, okay, let's go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're going to win every day. <laughs> Trust, you guys don't know, man. Last couple of years, I had to watch my father grow as a person, you know, since I had kids. You guys got to know, like, poor immigrant parents are fucked. They hit their kids, they don't give a shit. My dad used to hit me all the time. He didn't give a fuck. I want you to know, my father hit me up until I was like almost a teenager, didn't give a fuck. And if I was to ever hit my daughter, he would knock me out. Okay? Immigrant parents change when they become grandparents. They're like, yeah, I hit you, but never hit your daughter. I'm gonna cross brain damage. How do you know? Look at you. Tell the joke, smoke marijuana, daddy do too much. Uh. <laughs> Immigrant parents are honest like that. They're fucked up. I remember asking him, I go, but, but what's the difference now? Why doesn't, like, why don't people hit their kids? Why did you guys hit every, like, you know, you guys hit all the time. He goes, you want to know why? Everybody have cell phone. When you little, I hit you, one lady see, who give a shit? Now, I hit you, one lady see, go to jail. Okay? Nobody have fucking camera. If somebody have camera, daddy, jail, four, five, talk. It's true. It's funny like that. I love it too, because it's really funny. I remember going, oh, Daddy, you know, like, what if I wanted to hit Aaliyah? Aaliyah's my daughter, she's five, okay? She's tiny, beautiful little girl. And she never does nothing wrong. You know why she doesn't do nothing wrong? She has no chance to do anything wrong. When she's bored, she got a phone. When she's tired, she takes a nap. I, I give her everything. For some reason, my parents just didn't have anything, so they used to give me nothing. <laughs> you show up at a family member's house, hey, sit here, for how long? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> and you just fucking sat there, fucking 10 years old, whacked out of your fucking mind. 
They wonder why they hit us. They gave us fucking sugar and all that shit when we were kids in the 90s. They go, I remember walking in my cousin's house and my aunt just going like, hey, your cousin in the basement, here's two liters of Sprite and a bag of chips. Bye-bye. <laughs> remember the two liter when you were like 10? That shit was fucked. You just fucking... Walk over with a two liter and call your cousin, hey, bring a fucking cup. Hold the cup. Hold the fucking cup. <laughs> remember that? And you had to fucking... And it did that thing where it was like, blah, 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 blah. Hold the fuck! That's what it felt like when you were a kid to pour a two liter. Just this, this could go wrong right now. <laughs> then they wonder why the fuck we had so much energy. Bro, I'm all whacked out. <laughs> Parents just turn on the TV. I don't even like this channel. Figure it out, asshole. It's fucking flipping. It's another thing. I caught myself flipping through channels the other day. And I go, this is almost a dead thing. Flipping, this is an old person thing. Kids don't flip. Kids don't fucking flip. Kids start wherever the fuck they want. They can start a show in the first minute, stop halfway, fuck off for three days, come back, finish the rest. <laughs> None of us grew up with that. What did we grow up with? Whatever the fuck was on is what you watched. And however much time was left, that's what you got. Do you remember when you were a kid flipping through and you'd be like, fuck, there's 15 minutes left in this. I guess that's what I'm gonna watch, 15 minutes of this. Do you remember how you found that thing? I, my daughter the other day was like, well, how did you know it was on TV, Daddy? I was like, it was a channel called Channel 5, and you would just watch the fucking things go up. And it was insane and the worst. You ever fucking just miss your channel by a little bit? Like, no, no, no! Fuck! Fuck! You try to bring it back down, you're like, where are you? Are you up there in the fucking... Now you have to sit there and watch fucking five minutes on nothing. It took so long, you would find something else to watch. You would time your whole life around that. Okay, four o'clock, Arthur. Five o'clock, Simpsons. <laughs> Kids won't understand that. My daughter will never understand that after midnight, television changed completely. Remember that? That's gone, man. Netflix doesn't turn into porno after midnight, you know what I'm saying? Netflix is Netflix no matter what time. We didn't grow up like that. If you weren't in bed by midnight, you were gonna get some softcore dick, some softcore tits. If you knew where to find it on Tele Latino, you had, well, let's go. Man, if you ever woke up and Tele Latino was the first channel on, you knew somebody was up. You're like, bro, there's not even a Latino in this fucking house. What the fuck? Who the hell's watching this at three in the morning? Sensual moments brought you. Hey, you guys having a good time or what, man? Oh, man. <laughs> I wasn't even going to do this little line I'm going to do because you guys are funny. I, a, few, a few weeks ago, I asked my dad, I go, what if I wanted to hit Aaliyah? He goes, what do you mean? I go, what if she did something bad and I wanted to hit her? He goes, never hit her. She princess. She good girl. She nice. And I swear to God, I went, but you used to hit me. And he gets even angry. He goes, because you piece of shit. Okay? Okay? <laughs> He's hype like that, trust. He's just going, oh, yeah, yeah. When I tell Elia, no do, she no do. When I say Mikey, no do, Mikey fucking do. Relax. Okay. They're like that though. You know, like, <laughs> it's weird watching them change and grow as grandparents. They were so tough as parents. You had Canadian parents who feel blessed because your fucking childhood was sick. They get it. You know, they get it. Immigrant parents don't fucking get it. <laughs> they don't even try. <laughs> like, you come home late with Canadian parents, they get it. You know, like, ah, fucking Matthew, it's three in the morning. Are you serious? <laughs> We're gonna have a talk about this in the fucking morning. I swear to God. And just go right back to sleep. No fucks given. <laughs> Immigrant parents don't do that. I had a Portuguese mom. Portuguese moms never go to sleep. Never go to sleep. <laughs> it could be five in the morning. They've been awake for four days. Their kid isn't home. I have to wait. Why, Ma? Does waiting make sure that I'm safe? I don't know. 
I used to get my friends to drop me off down the street because she was fucking psycho. Because my mother got me a cell phone, and when she got me a cell phone, I realized how crazy it was. Like, it was a time thing. She would call me at nine, and it would be no biggie. She'd be like, Mikey, mommy, call you nine o'clock? Uh, come home soon, okay? Love you, bye. And then it would change, 11. Oh, 11 o'clock, I'm very worried. You know, call me very dark outside. I think it's gonna rain. Please, come home now. Love you, bye. <laughs> Fucking two in the morning, man. <laughs> Those messages, I wish I had kept them. Yeah. Just so she could hear it, because she doesn't, yell. I tell her, I'm like, man, do you remember what those messages sound like? And she'd be like, no, why? I'm worried. I'm like, you're not worried. The first minute of the car. You're like, Shh. And then at the end of the message, you'd be like, love you, bye. Like, I'm dying in the last, like, you know. She said, love you, I can die. Like, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, man. I used to get my friends to drop me off down the street. I didn't want her showing up, man. My mother would show up at the fucking front door holding her little nightgown like this. God forbid a fucking tick comes up, you know. <laughs> man, you ever try to sneak into your own fucking house? <laughs> Nothing better than when you were like a teenager or in your early twenties, just try to sneak into your own house. I always remember thinking, like my mother, like, like my mother just at the door, like, where the fuck he's going? Backyard. <laughs> I remember sneaking around and shit like that. Hey, you ever, you ever notice how good your senses are when you're drunk in the darkness of your own house? As you open the door, you're like, this is the loudest fucking door in the history of doors. I can hear every clink, clink, clank, clink, clink, clank, 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 clink, clank, clank, clink, clink. During the day, it's never. You never heard that door. You're like. Freak. Three in the morning. <laughs> take off your shoes. You ever try to take off your shoes? You miss the fuck. What? I'll never forget being drunk as fuck and in the darkness of the house. You know what's a funny thing that every human goes through that is so fucking universal, it's insane? You ever get scared in your own house? What does everybody do? Everybody does the same fucking thing. You bluff a hello into your house. You ever, you know what I'm talking about? You ever sitting on the couch and you hear something, you put the TV on mute? What do you do? You go, hello? Hello? What kind of fucking thought process is this? What, you're, are you yelling hello to the murderer? What's he gonna do? Oh, you caught me, fuck. Oh, I was gonna murder. But not anymore, because you said hello. Because that's automatic, death. Can you imagine in the darkness of your house, you went hello and somebody went, yeah, yeah. it's over. Over. They don't have to murder you, you just had a heart attack and you're fucking. I remember coming home one time. <laughs> Immigrant parents are funny. I remember coming home, and it's the darkness of the basement, and I knew that my mom was there because I could hear this in the darkness. <laughs> and I'm taking off my shoes, and I can hear her breathing coming down the hallway. And I go, hello? And as soon as I say hello, I can see like a little silhouette, and she just flicks on the light, and she goes, where are you? Three in the morning, three in the morning. I go, relax, relax. And immigrant parents do this thing where they yell at the top of their lungs, but they tell you that they're not yelling, you know? And I remember going, Ma, you're getting nervous. You're going to start yelling. I'm not yelling. I'm nervous. I'm not yelling. I'm nervous. I'm going, you're fucking yelling. Relax. You're going to wake up daddy. I remember her going, your daddy's sleeping. You're not going to wake up. And then as soon as he said that, just my dad going, hey, what the fuck happened downstairs? <laughs> you ever come home so late your dad shows up with underwear and night dick? <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? You just, your dad comes down the stairs with his underwear and his night dick yelling, hey, what the fuck are you going? <laughs> hey, it's three in the morning now. <laughs> you never saw your dad's night dick, you never came home late enough. <laughs> oh, yeah. That fucker only shows up two, three in the morning. <laughs> you know, I had immigrant parents, it was so fucked up. Even nowadays, man, to, to watch my parents grow with marijuana is weird. Like, my dad asks questions all the time because he watches the news and he's like, hey, wh what's the marijuana drink? What's the, like, the drink for marijuana? I'm like, what do you mean? Like, he's like, is it like a beer? You have to drink like a beer? I'm like, yeah, it's like drinking a beer. He's like, how's it feel? I'm like, why don't you try? No, no, no. <laughs> you tell me and then maybe I do. 
One of my favorite memories in life is when my mother had breast cancer. <laughs> my mother was going through breast cancer treatment. I remember calling her and telling her that I had picked her up CBD pills and her being like, CBD, what's CBD? And I go, CBD, ma, it's like marijuana, but it's just the pills. And her being like, I don't want it, this is crazy, this is drugs, you fucking crazy, I don't want it. And I'm like, just try it. I left it at the house, just try it one day. And I, as she was going through chemotherapy, she tries the like CBD pill, she liked it. And I'll never forget one of the greatest calls I ever get from my mother. I'm at work, I'm writing for a TV show at the time. And I, I pick up and I go, hi, Ma. And she goes, hello. I go, you okay? She goes, I feel great today. <laughs> I go, why? She goes, I try it. I, I go, try what? It's been like two, three weeks. I'm not even thinking it's the pills. I go, try it what? She goes, I try. I tried it, you know. I go, try what, man? What are you talking about? And I started, she goes, I tried the marijuana pill you give me. I like it. I like the marijuana. I go, you tried it? She goes, yeah. I go, no way. She goes, yeah, I try. I can't believe I feel much better. I go, are you hungry? She goes, I'm fucking starving, man. Yeah. <laughs> I go, good, good, you know? And, and, and I go, so why are you calling me? You calling me why? And she goes, because I need the mode. <laughs> I remember being on the phone like, man, this is fucking crazy. <laughs> CBD, you know, makes them feel good. They've never had any marijuana, so when that shit hits them, they're like, holy shit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like this 40 years already, holy shit. Best part of this whole story is when I'm on the phone with her talking about the CBD, so we start talking. I go, Ma, I don't have the pills. I have to order them. She goes, how long it takes to come home? I go, maybe a week. And she, at the time, she was going through chemo. She goes, a week? I have cancer. I'm going to die. I got no way one week. I go, you're not going to die. Just relax, man. I'll get you fucking extra pills so you have them for a long time. She goes, okay. For now, you don't have nothing for me. You love marijuana. You don't have marijuana pill. I go, no, I don't have marijuana pill. She goes, why? You smoke so much marijuana. You don't have the pills. I go, no, man. I don't have pills. I have smoking. You want to smoke? <laughs> she goes, no. I'm not a crackhead like you. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't fucking crackhead, man. You know, like, and I go, man, uh, okay, if you don't want to smoke, you want to try cookies? And she goes, what do you mean cookies? I go, I have cookies. They have cookies in the fridge right now. They're strong, but if you eat half the cookie, you're going to feel okay. And she goes, I don't know. Let me, let me think about it. Like, what do you mean cookie? I go, man, so I start explaining to her. And then after I'm done, there's this pause. And she goes, huh, okay, bring me one cookie. <laughs> And I go, you want one? And she goes, yeah. And I didn't know, my father's on the phone. He goes, hey man, tell him to bring two cookies. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and I go, daddy, you wanna try? He goes, hey, your mom gonna try. I wanna try one too, what the fuck? <laughs> I go, good. Now I want you guys to know, even years later, my mother's cancer free, my father still eats edibles at once, and it's the funniest shit I've ever fucking experienced. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's 70, he's never bought drugs in his life. So when he buys drugs, even now, he buys it like it's real drugs. I, I bring, I'm bringing this fucking dude a six pack of cookies. Weed cookies, and I'll be like, he'll be like, hey, mommy says you're coming today to the house for lunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm coming, I'm gonna be there for lunch. <clears throat> bring the cookies. <laughs> what? Bring the cookie. Okay. You want me to bring what? Fuck you. <laughs> and he never does it normal. He'll always be like, bring the cookie, but no, hey, no park in the front. I'm gonna move the car, bring it for the garage, bring it around. <laughs> you want me to bring it to the garage? Bring the car to the garage, bring me the cookies. I don't want nobody to see. Who, who the fuck is gonna watch you buy cookies and be like that Carlos is a drug addict. A couple weeks ago, it was like, fuck, legit, almost a month ago. Uh, I I'm on the road. At the time, I'm in, uh, I think I was in Boston. I'm in Boston, Massachusetts, doing a TV show. And I get, I get a call. <laughs> and I know, that vibration's my dad. I look, I go, hello? He goes, hey, how long are you in America? I go, I'm gonna be in America for another like week. He goes, holy shit. <laughs> Listen, I have no more cookies. <laughs> And I go, what do you want me to do? He goes, you don't have no more? I go, fuck, I have some at home. He goes, what kind? I go, you have to get the cookie cookie, like the circle one. I go, don't get the, the square one. Square one's brownie, it's more strong. He goes, what, what do you mean more strong? <laughs> I go, it's strong, don't get the fucking cookies. He goes, okay. 
Uh, I don't even know how to explain this. Like, my wife gets home maybe two hours later. She gets home. She goes to go get one of our edibles. It's fucking gone. She calls me. She goes, hey, uh, I, I, our edibles are gone. Where the fuck's the brownies? I go, oh, fuck. My dad came over. I told him not to take the brownies. She goes, I think he took the brownies. I go, are you serious? He goes, she goes, yeah, the cookies are in the fridge. I go, oh, my God. I'm going to call my dad. I want you guys to know, my dad's cookies are 50 milligrams. It's pretty strong. My cookie is 150 milligrams. My brownie is going to fuck him up. As soon as I called him, I want you guys to know, my father is the type of person who picks up on the first ring no matter what. Sometimes he picks up before I bring the phone to my fucking ear. You know, you ever fucking, it's like that. Like, I'll call him and I'll be like, and he'll be like, yeah, what the fuck, hello? Yeah, you called me. I didn't even ring yet, you fuck. He's like that. Always, always on it. I remember calling him and he doesn't pick up on the first one. So I call him again. Doesn't pick up on the second. I'm like, oh my God. I message him. Hey, you okay? Calls me right after he gets the message. I go, hello? He goes, hey. How you know I'm not okay? <laughs> I go, I know you're not okay because you took the fucking brownie. And I said, he goes, you say to take the brownie. I said, no, take the cookie. He goes, oh shit, I take the brownie. And I go, what are you doing right now? And I swear, the 70 year old man, he goes, hey, I'm hiding from mommy. <laughs> mommy upstairs, I don't want her to catch me. I go, you're, you're the dad, bro, just check her. Let her know you're all fucked up. He goes, I don't want mommy to know I'm all fucked up because she's gonna ask me to do something. I go, what? He goes, I don't know. She's gonna ask me paint the garage or some bullshit. And I go, you don't want to paint? He goes, no. I want to watch the Food Channel. <laughs> and I go, who are you watching? And I swear to God, he's so high. He goes, I, I watch Gay Fire. <laughs> I go, Guy Fury. He goes, Gay Fire, Gay Fury. What's the problem? <laughs> it's not Gay Fire, you idiot. <laughs> Dude, my father's become my favorite person in my house. It used to be my mom because, you know, you love your moms. But as I get older, my father is fucking hilarious. He's nuts. He's nuts. <laughs> when, my mother got, when my mother got a cell phone, at first he was like, cell phone, hey, this is for young people. I don't give a shit. <laughs> and then eventually he started like catching on. And <laughs> you know, he realized like, man, this looks cool as fuck. When he retired, I remember we were having a, like a retirement party. And so this is about two months out of the retirement itself. And I go, Daddy, what do you want for your retirement? He goes, you know what I want, Mikey? I want a cell phone. I go, oh, you want a cell phone? Why? He goes, everybody have cell phone, but Daddy no have. I want a cell phone. And I go, that's nice, man. What are you going to do? And he goes, remember the time you showed me? I never forget. <laughs> do you know what he was talking about? A time... I showed him that you could watch porn on a phone, okay? You guys gotta understand, my father's ex-military mad conservative. Like, he's, this guy hasn't seen a porno since like, you know, 67 by mistake, you know? You guys gotta understand, it's one of my favorite memories in life. We were at my father's cottage, and we're watching the Blue Jays on a cell phone. It's me and my cousin. We're just sitting there having beer, smoking joints, watching the Jays. I'll never forget, my dad walks by, he goes, what are you guys doing? We go, well, daddy, we're watching the Blue Jays. He goes, Blue Jays? You watch the Blue Jays on the cell phone? We go, yeah, we're watching the Blue Jays right now. He goes, this game is live. That's crazy. We go, man, you can watch anything. He goes, what do you mean anything? We go, daddy, you can watch anything. And he goes, anything? We go, anything. And my cousin just goes, hey, you can watch people have sex right now. <laughs> Guys, at first I was all embarrassed. I was like, what the fuck? And I want you to know, it was the first time in my life I ever saw my father break character. Do you know what break character means? Like, like you ever been in a mall with your mother? And usually your mom's your mom, but you ever like get a nudge and she's like, you see that lady over there, her name Gloria, she's a fucking bitch. You're like, oh, <laughs> holy shit, mommy. I didn't know it was like that. You know, like usually your mom's your mom, but sometimes they're your friend, you know? Like, oh, oh, oh. It's the first time I ever saw my father break character. I'll never forget. As soon as we went, Daddy, you can watch people have sex right now. This is, he goes, sex, come on. Come on, man. Come on, show me, let me see, come on, man. 
And he starts doing this little like pervy walk towards us. And we go, what do you want to see? He goes, I don't give a shit. You guys say it's uh, sex on the phone. What are you guys going to show? We go, what do you want to see, daddy? You can see anything. He goes, what do you mean I can see anything? What's anything? I go, and in my head, I'm like, this guy doesn't understand. He doesn't understand what anything, like anything, anything. And he's such a nice person. He goes, oh. Oh, I can see anything. Let me see sexy lady, big boobie, sexy body. It's okay. I go, that's good. That's what you want to see. He goes, yeah, let me see sexy lady. And we go, well, what do you want her doing? You want her having sex? He goes, yeah. I go, what kind of man? Black, white, Chinese. He starts laughing. He goes, black, white, Chinese. I don't know. Let me see the black guy. I remember, I, <laughs> this, this isn't actually part of the joke, but I, in the moment when he goes, the black guy, we go, why do you want to see the black guy? He goes, you guys say it's okay. And we go, yeah, but why do you want to see? And I swear to God, he leans in face to face. He goes, everybody always talk, 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 but I never see. Uh, 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 you don't want to see a black guy, daddy. You want to see the black guy. We showed him the biggest one we could find, man. We showed him a guy named Mandingo and it blew his fucking mind, man. Okay? We showed Mandingo to my dad and he couldn't handle it, man. He could not fucking handle it. Because if you know Mandingo, a lot of times he comes out in a fucking towel. And the guy comes out in a towel. This is as close of an impression as I can do, okay? My dad, phone. Hey. Oh, look at this guy. Why he have the towel, huh? This guy's scared to show. Oh, holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! No! This is real or not real? This is real or not real? <laughs> and I swear to God, we went, Daddy, that's real, and it's not even hard yet. He went, oh, my God! Never show mommy this. Never show... Mommy this. <laughs> Holy shit. And we're all having a laugh. And we've all watched porn. We know what's going to happen. That giant dick's going to go on this lady. He starts watching the sex and the lady on the phone starts going, ah, ah, ah. My dad goes, hey, hey, she's yelling. She don't like it. She's yelling. She don't like it. Why? Why you give me this? And I swear to God, as he's yelling, he slaps the phone down and goes, Hey, tell me the truth. She gonna be okay? I don't... <laughs> I swear to God, I remember going, I don't know, Daddy, I never made it to the end. It's so different. Kids learn about sex in school and shit now. We didn't learn about sex in school. We learned about sex on TV. Through one of the greatest doctors in the history of Canadian television, fucking Dr. Sue, man, man, fucking sex with Dr. Sue. If you don't know what sex with Dr. Sue is, God bless your fucking good heart, man. Straight the fuck up. Because it was a weird show that fucked all of our brains up as kids. We would just sit there and it would, if you don't know what sex with Dr. Sue was, it was this like 90 year old lady who would just talk about sex. And it was, is she still alive? How much sex is that lady still having? I'm 101 and I can go for seven minutes. <laughs> There's no way Dr. Sue's still alive. You think so? You're like, I know so. I called in the other day. <laughs> I wanted to ask Dr. Sue. I cannot get hard, but I want to. <laughs> Honestly, bro, it's not even mostly men calling in. It's ladies. One of my favorite ones, you go on YouTube right now, is this lady. There's <laughs> no joke here. This is a story, man. Is this lady calling in and she goes, Hi, uh, my name is uh, Kathy and I'm about, uh, we're, we're returning uh, 75 next year. And we just wanted to let you know that because of your show, we've began trying new things. And uh, lately, I've been trying fellatio, something I hadn't really done before. And, uh, but I can't seem to bring my husband to orgasm through fellatio. Dr. Sue, is there any tips you can give me? Thank you so much. And I remember being like, what the fuck is fellatio? And I'll never 
never forget, I'm like 10, and I'll never forget, Dr. Sue just comes on, and she goes, well, thank you, caller. What you want to do is put the dickhead in your throat and go, grr, 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 grr. <laughs> and you really, and I'll never forget, she goes, and you really want a deep throat, get the dick deep into the throat, and go, grr, grr, and hold your husband's balls, get a little gravity behind the ball. <laughs> and I'll never forget, I'm like 10 with my cousins, I go, hey, what the fuck is deep throat? <laughs> And every one of my cousins is like, I don't know, I don't know what deep throat. See, this is the fucked up thing. You have Canadian parents, you ask them, what's deep throat? They know something's wrong. They're like, we have to have a talk. Oh my God, Matthew, deep throat? Oh my God. I'll never forget. I remember driving home with my parents. I have my little Portuguese parents. I go, mommy, what's deep throat? She goes, I don't know, Carlos, what's deep throat? I swear to God, my dad goes, deep throat is like baseball. The guy do the deep throat. Oh, look, boom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hear all the time, oh, that guy catch deep throat to force base. <laughs> Somebody say it was Sega? <laughs> That's where I live, you know? It's funny, man. My wife and I moved out there at the beginning of COVID just to get out of the city. We didn't want to live in the city. We thought the world was coming to an end. And we're like, if we're gonna die, we're gonna die near the beach in Wasega. <laughs> next to two teenagers fucking on the beach. <laughs> oh my God. When we moved out there, it's funny. Like we lived together in the city, but we never had a house, house together. And when we got our house together, like it was my parents' old cottage, so we had to fucking revamp it. It's such a magical thing. You're like, we're gonna make it our fucking home. But then you realize like, you guys ever do renovations? <laughs> Yo, it's the most frustrating shit. That's one thing you never see on the fucking, like those renovation shows. So we're gonna renovate the whole fucking house in two months, let's go. Do that with your fucking wife, do that with your wife. By the end of those two months, it's just you renovating by yourself. <laughs> or her, because my wife was sick at it in reality, but she was sick. <laughs> but we, man, like, you know, over the last few years of learning, living together up north, we've been dealing with how to fight and how to argue. And it's so funny how good you get as you get older. Like when you're younger, you're so emotionally attached to the argument. No, I don't give a fuck, fuck you, like that, you know? And then as you get older, you're like, I don't wanna yell. <laughs> but how am I gonna get this message across? <laughs> you're really fucking annoying me today. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. I annoy her just as much as she annoys me and that's, that you need that in your relationship. If one of you is more annoying than the other, it's never gonna work. it to be equal amounts of annoying. It's true. I do stupid shit like leave my socks. That's my thing she hates. Why you gotta leave socks? You leave socks everywhere. The fucking socks in the living room. And we have a cat and a dog who steal the socks. <laughs> like, we move the couch every couple months and just, they're like, here they fucking are. <laughs> you ever catch your dog stash and you look at them? What do they do? <laughs> <laughs> like, they just can't believe, like, oh my God, he, he found the socks. <laughs> <laughs> cats don't give a shit. You find your cat's stash of socks, they look at you like, what? They're my fucking socks. <laughs> fuck out of here. <laughs> See, my thing is socks. Her thing is boxes. She leaves the fucking boxes everywhere. Boxes. She finishes the cereal. She doesn't, you know, the cereal box with the fucking cereal. She doesn't throw it out. Stuffs that little plastic sleeve in. I'll deal with you later. <laughs> And then like weeks later, you're like, hey man, maybe I'll have some cereal. And you go get it, you're like, there's no fucking cereal. <laughs> and all you can hear in your head is socks, fucking socks. You're like, box, fucking box. <laughs> you ever just hold on to shit for that one petty moment in your relationship? You know, like I don't know, one of my favorite things is the time, but was, I couldn't wait for her to bring up socks. I knew she was gonna bring it up one day. I even left a couple on purpose, you know? <laughs> You're like, I, I want, I need to get this shit off my chest. And the only way I'm gonna do it is her complaining about the socks. And I'll never forget, the second it happens. Mike, what the fuck, man? Look at all the socks near the dog's bed. So many fucking socks. I go, man, you always complain about the fucking socks. What about all these fucking boxes? She, I, I swear to God. Every, this whole argument hinges on her going, what boxes? <laughs> if it is, she doesn't say what boxes, I got nothing. If she goes, oh, I'm sorry, argument's done. I got nothing, I'm like, oh, all right. But if she didn't, she goes, what boxes? I'm like, what boxes, chill. Before I even tell you, let me get cereal because I'm hungry. What the fucking cereal? Oh, oh la, la, la. let me get some Rice Krispies so I don't get, oh, la, la, la. And then you're like, I'm sorry about the fucking socks. 
And that's the way you deal with it as an adult. You gotta wait for those moments. You gotta evolve as a person. Isn't it funny watching things evolve as a person? You guys ever watch your parents get better? Like things like that, like, like I was talking about arguments with my wife. The last few years it's been great watching my parents argue less because they've become more independent on their own. Like, it's a clap if your parents are on the internet. Let me hear you if your parents are on the internet. Let me hear you. Uh, if your parents aren't on the internet, yeah, you, you, fuck, you just wait, yo. I never thought my mom would be on the internet. <laughs> and then during COVID, I'll never forget, like, fucking month one. She goes, hey, I want a tablet, I want cell phone, because everybody have one and I don't have. I go, what are you going to do? She goes, I want Facebook. <laughs> I go, why? She goes, I want to see what you do all the time. <laughs> if there's ever been a Portuguese reason to have Facebook, that's it right there. <laughs> I want to watch you. <laughs> Dudes, getting your immigrant parents on the internet is insane because they've never used it. My mother never used a tablet. Turn it on, didn't know. Fucking start the thing. What's this little button for the home? This gonna bring me home? <laughs> yeah, what's home? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Crazy things. Some of them are logical though. I remember the, okay, so I, I log her into Facebook. She has Facebook, it's, it's like been a week. And then I don't know what the fuck happened. I think it updated, so it logged her out. And she calls me at like nine in the morning, freaking out. Hey, I'm nervous, I don't know what to do. Every time I go to login, my password no come up. Little black circle come up when I put it there. And I go, man, that's your password. It's blocking it so nobody can see. And she goes, nobody here, who the fuck are gonna see? <laughs> It's for me. <laughs> Watching my mother go through these things, man, it's been hilarious. Watching her learn how to use the internet. And, and, and during COVID, I was on a TV show with Russell Peters and Russell, we, we, we did a show called uh, Roast Battles Canada and we got nominated for a Canadian Screen Award, which was insane, man. Thank you guys. Big, you know, thank you. When we got nominated, I wrote a status on my Facebook. You know, like you do on social media as a performer. Hey, thank you so much for all the love. I wouldn't be here without you guys. You guys aren't gonna believe this. Uh, Roast Battles Canada got nominated. It's like that. Fucking status blows up. Thousands of likes, hundreds of comments. People I haven't seen in fucking years. And who's the top comment? Who? My fucking mom. <laughs> Why? Because not everything translates in Portuguese. And in Portuguese, you don't finish things off with LOL or XO. You finish them off with the word kisses. And the word kisses in Portuguese is Beijing. And the short form for Beijing is what? BJ. Fucking BJ's. BJ's. Hey, my mother wrote on the status of my career, congratulations, lots of BJ's. I didn't even see it right away, okay? I, I, I'm a writer, I, I was sitting at my computer and I get a text, <laughs> it's my sister. All it said is, check your Facebook, mommy's fucking shit up. <laughs> and I go, oh. and, you know, I log in, she's the top comment. And, and when I go to see, she's already got over 100 reactions, people laughing, people giving the hug. Man, one guy even wrote, wow, I wish my mom was cool. No, no. She doesn't even know what this fucking means. And when I called her, she knew something was wrong. I go, Ma. I go, Ma, I'll never forget. She goes, hey, why everybody like me on your Facebook today? I go, man, everybody likes you because you wrote something wrong. She goes, I don't write nothing wrong. I'm your mommy. I give you, uh, I give you the BJ. I go, no, no, never say that again. Never. And she goes, why, what's wrong? I go, BJ is not what you think it is, mom. She goes, what do you mean? I go, BJ, man, BJ, you never heard BJ? BJ in English isn't the BJ's, BJ. She goes, what is BJ? You say BJ, I don't know. I go, man, BJ, you know, like blowjob. And when I said blowjob, I thought she was gonna go, oh. She didn't, she went, what's a blowjob? I 
I, I remember thinking, I'm not supposed to be the one who teaches you these things. You're supposed to learn on the journey of life like the rest of us. One day you bump into your cousin, he goes, blowjob, boom, that's it. Now you know for the rest of your life. Never forget. She goes, tell me, what's this blowjob? I never, I go, man, you've been in fucking Canada 50 years? You never heard the word blowjob? And she gets even angry and goes, no, I never have a job like this before. <laughs> Mommy, man, it's not a fucking job, man. It is, but it's not, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't get a fucking T4 for sucking a dick, man. I'm sorry, man. I don't. And I'll never forget. I go, man, a blowjob is sex, mommy. She goes, sex? I go, yeah. A blowjob is when you put the dick in the mouth and you say, ah! Ah! I go, you okay? Ah! I go, why? She goes, I give the blowjob on Facebook all the time. <laughs> Guys, I've been Mike Reader, man. Thank you so much. I love you, Toronto. Thank you. Good night. Two, three.